Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a bit now, you know we're doing a series of videos about what's going on in Olympia this legislative session. This is a short legislative session, but there are several bills kicking around that could significantly affect your Second Amendment rights. Now, we've done a video previously, and we talked about five bills, and I've got to be honest with you, I missed one. And we're going to have to spend a few minutes today talking about Senate Bill 5568. Now, there has been a little bit of misconception, I believe, about what this bill does and what it doesn't do, what it's intended to do. So let's spend a few minutes today and talk about what's really in Senate Bill 5568. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below. If you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Click the little bell logo down below if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, especially when it comes to these legislative issues, let's keep the comments and discussions coming. That's how we're going to make sure we get our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, so the subject that we're going to be talking about today is Senate Bill 5568, an act relating to preemption of municipal laws restricting open carry of weapons, amending RCW 941-300, reenacting uh, re and amending 941-300, and providing an effective date, providing an expiration date, and declaring an emergency. So this is an emergency which means if it passes, the governor will have the opportunity to sign it and immediately put it into law, similar to Senate Bill 5038, the open carry ban on West Capitol grounds and permitted demonstrations that occurred last legislative session. Okay, so as we get rolling, we have to understand the importance of state preemption. Now, state preemption it basically states that only the state of Washington gets to set forth our firearms regulations towns, counties, municipalities, things such as that, smaller governmental agencies cannot, in most instances, add any other type of restrictive firearm regulations. And this is important to all of us in Washington State because we can imagine a road trip where we're going from perhaps King County to Spokane County. Now, as we drive across the state, if each county was allowed to have its own firearm regulations, we would start in King County where there would most assuredly be a magazine restriction. There'd probably be a ban on many, many types of firearms. And as we moved east, first going through Kittitas County, going through Grant County, Adams County, and so on as we went across the state, we would literally be going from jurisdiction to jurisdiction where our activities merely on what we are possessing would go from lawful to unlawful to lawful to unlawful depending on which jurisdiction it is. There are some states who actually run themselves this way, California being one of them, which should come as a shock to nobody. So in Washington state, the nice thing is, is that if a firearm is restricted in Whatcom County, it's also restricted in Whitman County. If there were to be some type of a law that restricted certain activity in King County, that same law would restrict the very same activity in Spokane County. So it's easy to tell individuals such as you, the lawful and responsible gun owner, how we need to behave and act and what the confines of the law are no matter where we are inside our state borders. If we were to do away with state preemption, we now create a situation where we can have a hodgepodge of various gun laws scattered throughout the state, which would, of course, reflect the political leaning of that particular jurisdiction. State preemption is so important that it has actually been codified in RCW 9.41.290, which reads in pertinent parts as follows. The state of Washington hereby fully occupies and preempts the entire field of firearms regulation within the boundaries of the state, including the registration, licensing, possession, purchase, sale, acquisition, transfer, discharge, and transportation of firearms or any other element relating to firearms or parts thereof, including ammunition and reloader components. Cities, towns, and counties or other municipalities may enact only those laws and ordinance relating to firearms that are specifically authorized by state law as in RCW 9.41.300 and are consistent with this chapter. Such local ordinance shall have the same penalty as provided for by state law. Local laws and ordinances that are inconsistent with, 
more restrictive then, or exceed the requirements of state law, shall not be enacted and are preempted and repealed, regardless of the nature of the code, charter, or home rule status of such city, town, county, or municipality. And so what does this law say? This law is saying that, hey, listen, you cannot pass individual gun laws within your municipality or your county unless it is specifically authorized in statute and that any law you pass cannot be any more restrictive than current state law. If you pass a more restrictive law, it is by statute deemed to be repealed and void. Now, what this statute actually wants to do is add a new section to RCW 9.41.300. Now, what is 941.300? 941.300 is the statute that lists many of our gun-free zones. So, for example, you can't carry a firearm regardless of your concealed carry status. You cannot carry a firearm in a jail to a courthouse, to a mental health facility, to secure areas of airports, to areas designated as age 21 and over by LCCB. Those are all of the areas listed in RCW 9.41.300. Now, interestingly, that statute does carve out a little, of ex a little exception for towns, counties, and municipalities to make certain additional restrictions. The statute found in subsection 3 specifically states, Cities, towns, counties, and other municipalities may act laws and ordinances a. Restricting the discharge of a firearm in any portion of their respective jurisdictions when there is a reasonable likelihood that humans, domestic animals, or property will be jeopardized b. Restricting the possession of a firearm in any stadium or convention center operated by a city, town, county, or other municipality, except that such restrictions shall not apply to, and then the statute goes on to say it does not apply to those that have lawful concealed pistol licenses or any exhibitions in which firearms are being used. So 941.300 says, hey, listen, towns, municipalities, counties, you've got a couple of areas in which you can restrict firearms. You can restrict where firearms are discharged, based primarily on public safety, and you can restrict firearms at concert venues, sporting events, and other venues such as that, so long as that venue is owned and operated by the city, county, or municipality that's making the restriction. But those are the only two restrictions that a person can have. What Senate Bill 5568 purports to do is this, add a third section to 941-300 subsection 3, and that additional uh, authority of the cities to restrict firearms would read as follows. C. Restricting the open carry of a firearm or other weapon at any public meeting, any building or facility owned or operated by city, town, county, or other municipality, or at a permitted demonstration within their respective jurisdictions. So what Senate Bill 5568 purports to do, what it wants to do is add an additional section that would allow towns, cities, counties, municipalities to restrict the open carry of firearms at public meetings, government meetings, and permitted demonstrations within that particular jurisdiction. That is the only thing that Senate Bill 5568 does. So really nothing to worry about, right? Well, Here's the problem with this and any other type of legislation, and this is what I want all of us to be aware of. On its face, this seems rather innocuous. It's, it, to many, would not be considered that big of a deal. To others, it would be considered a very big deal. But here's the slippery slope that we're putting ourselves on. When we allow the legislature to start carving into our state preemption law, when we allow the state legislature to acquiesce regulation of our firearms to local governments, such as municipalities, counties, towns, and things like that, it is only a matter of time before those smaller municipalities begin to ask for more. There is an adage that when you give government an inch, they will take a mile and they will never give it back. So what concerns me and a lot of other lawful, responsible gun owners is not so much the passage of 5568, but what's next? What happens when we come up with some legislation that says that towns, municipalities, and counties get to uh, implement their own firearm bans or magazine restrictions or who can carry a firearm in what particular area? And that is the slippery slope that we must avoid with this piece of legislation and any other piece of legislation that draws us so dangerously close to that dangerous slope. Now, what can we do? Well, I've said this before and I will say this again. 
we have to contact our state representatives, we have to contact our state legislators, we have to contact our state senators and let them know that we oppose this legislation. If you do not know who your state senator is, if you do not know who your state representative is, shame on you. However, we will put a link down below so that you will be able to find it. Please remember, make your comments productive, make them positive, make them professional, but make them direct and let your legislator know that you do not support this legislation. Listen, we'll be doing more updates throughout the legislative session, not only on Senate Bill 5568, but all the other bills currently kicking around in Olympia. In the meantime, you may have questions about these bills or anything related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.